glad that you have chosen to join us today for worship here at First Baptist Church of Decatur. This is Valentine's Day, Sunday, February the 14th. And on this day in worship, we are going to focus on the love of God, the love that we find that comes to us from God. God's word tells us, behold what manner of love the Father has for us, that we should be called the children of God, that we should be his sons and daughters. God's word affirms that we are to love one another, for when we love, God's love is born in us, and God's love lives and comes to perfection through us. So we celebrate that love today. It is a love that will not let us go. It comes from the Father, abides deep in our hearts, and we are to express it to one another. Join us together today in worship. Welcome.
we take a moment to spend some time with our children, I want to ask each of you a question. I wonder what love looks like for you. If we were all together, I would have you share your answers. I bet for some of you, love looks like having a grown-up in your house make your favorite breakfast or give you dessert after dinner. I bet for some of you, love looks like being able to go and play with a friend you haven't seen in a long time. I bet love looks like hearing encouraging words or words that make you happy and proud of yourself from your teachers at school. Love looks like a lot of different things. Today is Valentine's Day, but the month of February is also Black History Month. And so today I'm going to share a story with you that talks about love and Black History Month at the same time. It's a story about a, na a man named Mr. Tuck. Mr. Tuck was a principal a long, long time ago here in the state of Georgia. And the school that Mr. Tuck was a principal of was only for children who were white. Back when Mr. Tuck was the principal of his school, there were schools for children who were white and schools for children who were African American. Now that might be hard for us to understand because today there's people from all over the world and all over the country who have different skin colors and languages they speak that all go to the same school. But a long time ago, this wasn't the case. But then the people who were in charge decided that they needed to combine the schools so that children who were white and children who were African American all went to the same school. And that school was Mr. Tuck's elementary school. On the first day of school, when the school bus pulled up with the children who were African American, there was a huge crowd of people outside who were yelling and were angry about this happening. And the children were scared. And so when the school bus pulled up in front of the school, Mr. Tuck came out of the school and climbed on the bus and spoke to the children. And he said, boys and girls, this is your school and I am Mr. Tuck, your principal. We're going to get through this together. I am so glad you are here. And then when it was time for the children to go into school, Mr. Tuck took their hands and walked them up to the doors of the school so that they could get to the front door safely and go to their class. Many, many years later, Mr. Tuck was old and he got sick and he was in the hospital and he noticed that there was one nurse who kept coming to check on him and who would sometimes stay late at night and even fall asleep in his room. And so finally one day he said to the nurse, you're here all the time. There are plenty of people to take care of me. You should go home and get some rest. And this nurse said, Mr. Tuck, you don't recognize me, but I know you. I was one of those children who held your hand as she walked up to school on that day so many years ago. And Mr. Tuck smiled and he took her hand and she said, we're going to get through this together. And he said, I am so glad you are here. Now, nowhere in this story did Mr. Tuck say to the children, I love you or you are loved. But through his actions and the way that he showed them that they were loved, well, they just knew. So much so that so many years later, one of those little girls who was then a grown-up remembered Mr. Tuck and the ways that he changed her life. So I hope that when you think of the ways that you are treating other people, that you will remember that the things you say and the things you do have power. And you can show people that you love them just by doing simple acts, like offering them a smile or playing with them. If you're at school and you see someone who needs a friend, you can offer to play with them or just being kind to someone you meet. My friends, I know that you love so very well, and I hope that you will try to do your best to show others that they are loved too. I hope you have a great week. Join your heart in prayer with mine for the pastoral prayer this morning. Oh 
Oh God, we see so many versions of love around us. Love that lifts us up and sustains us for a time. Love that comes up short. Love that makes big promises yet can't quite deliver. Love that is absent. Human love that tries oh so hard, it even has the best intentions, but love that is destined to stumble, falter, and even outright fail because we are creatures and not creator. But your love, O oh Lord, your love will not and cannot let us go. Your love walks us toward a tearless morning where joy is found in abundance and rain ceases. And so, this morning, especially on this morning, when the world is showing us versions of love that only gives us small glimpses of the steadfast love that you so freely give, we call on you to wrap our lives, our families, our struggling loved ones, our broken communities, our grief, our divisions, Wrap them all in your love that endures all things and hopes all things. And we call on you this morning to continue creating us into beings more capable of receiving your love and more ready to act with love with and among the people around us. It is you in your son's name and love that we pray. Amen.
1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love, the Word of God for the people of God. Here with me again from these verses in 1 Corinthians 13, as we conclude this chapter, beginning with verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. Then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then... I will be known fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. It is appropriate for us to speak about the power of God's love. On this day, the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, it is also appropriate for us to talk not only about the power of God's love, but how difficult that love can be sometimes when we face the kinds of challenges that arise in our lives. I am especially thankful today to welcome into our worship service a friend of mine who's been in my life for the last 40 years, Dr. Timothy Brown. Tim is currently the Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs at Trident Community College in Charleston, South Carolina. More importantly, though, for our purposes today, Tim has been a longtime member of Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston. If that title of that congregation sounds familiar to you, it's sometimes referred to also as Mother Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Since the early 1800s, this congregation has been a powerful prophetic voice in our country, not only for the African-American community, but for our nation as a whole. And it was on a particularly horrific Wednesday night in June in 2016, when nine members of that historic congregation were shot down in cold blood, including the Honorable Reverend Pinckney, who was the pastor of Emmanuel AME. Tim has been a member of this congregation for all these years and is going to speak with us honestly about moving through that journey with the church and seeing the powerful example of those nine families 
having the courage and the power of God's love to forgive the person who did that horrible act on that horrific night. And yet Tim, in our time together, as we will see, also is painfully honest about how hard that can be, particularly in light of other history in his own life and what he has seen and experienced since then. And I'm so grateful that he is with us today as a witness to what God's love can do, but also the struggle we all must continue to try to have together in seeking to live out God's love and find the power and the ability to forgive as we must in our lives and in our world. Tim, I'm so thankful that you are with us today. I'm grateful for your witness to our community, and I'm thankful that you are my friend. Welcome. I am so thankful to welcome my good friend, Dr. Timothy Brown. Tim and I go way back, and we have a lot of connections. We were freshmen together at Furman University in 1978. And Tim, we also were reminiscing just before we began our recording that we actually shared an art history book together for a pretty significant art history class that we both enjoyed. And I just discovered a few moments ago that you still have that art history book that, that I appreciated so much, all the underlinings and notes that you had taken. I'm so thankful, Tim, for your sharing with us. Um, there are many reasons I wanted to to have you as a guest at First Baptist Decatur. One of them is just because I've appreciated you so much all these years and our friendship and your, your warm smile and your generous spirit. But I also am so thankful to welcome you as a part of this worship service on this second Sunday in February, Black History Month, and specifically your relationship with Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Um, many of you listening in this morning are aware that Mother Emanuel Church is the historic location that has been a significant church leader of uh, prophetic word and loving word over the, the several centuries that Mother Emanuel has been in existence. But five years ago this year was the horrific shooting at Mother Emanuel. And Tim, you and I talked about this and still some of the, the, the um, significant ripple effects that that shooting has had, not only in uh, Emanuel Church, but also in our country. So I, I'm just so thankful that you are willing to be with me today on this uh, interview and I'm thankful that you're willing to share with our congregation about that experience, about the feelings still happening at Mother Emanuel, and also just as, as whatever you feel you need to say, what you want to say to our congregation about the times that we live in, the things that we need to hear, and how we can learn to love each other better in these days. Welcome, Tim. So glad you're here. Thank you. Um, that that's quite a, a a bit to 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 think about, and also to um, um, share. Um, I don't know if you know this, or if I or if I shared this with you. I've been a member of Emmanuel for uh, more than thirty years, and I joined that church um, not too long after I moved to Charleston. And I'm not from Charleston um, originally. I'm from a, a very small town um, in, in South Carolina, but I- Darlington. Darlington, exactly. <laughs> and so you remember that. Of course. And so when I um, finished up with my master's at the University of Iowa, I, I came back home, came back to South Carolina. And I moved here. And not too long after, moving to this area, I joined um, Emmanuel. And I joined Emmanuel under the recommendation of my um, my mom. Don't always That's listen to her. Good for her. Good for <laughs> but her. Um, she told me that, because I was shopping 
for a church to join when I, I got here. And I looked at three AME churches and I grew up AME, so I, I knew that I wanted to stay mm-hmm. with the AME um, denomination. And I had narrowed it down to three churches um, downtown. Um, one of them was Emmanuel. Another one was Greater St. Luke, and the other one was um, uh, Morris Brown. Greater St. Luke was interesting to me because the pastor there was the brother of the pastor that I had in Darlington for about 14 years. And the two, those two brothers looked so much alike, and I really liked my minister growing up, so I thought about joining there. But then my mom said, you ought to join Emmanuel because um, Reverend Gillison just got moved there, and he's this really good minister, and she just went on and on about Reverend Gillison because she knew about him because he was in a district um, where my church, my home church used to be. So that's why I joined e- Emmanuel and um, didn't really know as much about the history then as, as, as I know about it um, now. But you had asked, I guess, about my experience coming off of that that tragedy and that of course is a little more than five years ago and one of the things that had come out because of that and, and what many folks seem to know us for is that sense of forgiveness and 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 love yeah. Um, that 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 is there, or 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 that we're so much on, um, or people think of us as as, as, as having. Um, and I have to admit that I wasn't always there. Mm-hmm. Um, the I was in the sense of being able to forgive. Forgive. And, and Tim, I, I think it's important for us to remind everybody um, this was a Wednesday night Bible study. Yes. And this, a young man, a white yes. young man, came into the, the fellowship hall and was welcomed in by the congregation, came in and for over an hour sat in a Bible study with the members of the church who were hospitable and welcoming and tried to engage him in his Bible study, and as the Bible study ended, he ended up shooting nine of the the members, including the pastor, Mm -hmm. and this was a horrific, horrible experience that sent, I mean, just uh, shocking to everybody, but so this is the, this is the, the thing that you're referring to, and the difficulty of forgiving, and these families, I think all of the family, all nine families, forgave this young man but so what you're referring to i think is quite now significant of this is really hard and and i um and i remember sharing with um someone else that had it not been because of the families um because it was almost they were there that very next day when he was arraigned and um, and you could hear one family member after the other saying, I forgive you. Had I not heard that, I don't know if I would have gotten there. Yeah. And and love and, and forgiveness, that's not a very easy thing to do. Yeah, um, in a situation like that, I, yeah. And, and you really have to work at it. And, and when you think, and for me, that kind of um, horrific type of event that that took place, um, it wasn't the first time that I have been aware of such a thing. Um, As far as uh, racism and as far as issues of injustices, I can think back to when I was 10 years old I don't know if you um, have ever heard about this story, but when we had integration in Darlington County, uh, Lamar 
a, a, a town within Darlington County where I grew up. The, and I'm watching this on, on the news as a 10 year old. And my not knowing what the word racism is or not knowing what um, um, injustices, that one particular term at, at that age, but, yeah. but clearly I could see that something that was, was not right. Yeah. And so I'm looking at this, um, this mob of, 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 of white folks beating out this, the windows of a school bus and flipping the school bus um, over. And, and we're not talking about flipping a, a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> we're talking about a big school bus. Right. So right. when you think about one particular injustice or one act of racism over and over and over again that you witness and that you um, are aware of through all of your, your, your life, you just kind of get exhausted. And yeah. so to love and forgive, it really, to me, is a very, um, it's hard work. Yeah. And, and yeah. from what has happened at our church, because as you said, think about what that, that young man um, did uh, and, and the kind of disruption that he caused in people's lives. The disruption in the lives that he caused uh, with um, the the victims, their families, uh, and I don't know if you realize this. Pastor uh, Paintley's wife and one of his daughters were hiding in the office when that took place. A lot of people don't remember that or, or have forgotten that. And of yeah. course, the the three survivors that were that were there were a part of that that yeah. prayer group, that kind of disruption. Yeah. The kind of disruption that we've had at the church in a way in which we have gone through this whole thing of, of the security that we have around the, the church now. So you have to work at, at least I, I have to work at forgiveness and I have to work at love when I think about the kind of disruption that this guy um cause but if it yeah. hadn't been because of the families i don't know if i would would have gotten there yeah. Um, yeah. and that was a pretty tough tough night um there and, and and the other thing david as far as just being aware of problems with um injustices or or or, or problems that we're having um in society right now the shooting of um Walter Scott was just maybe a few months before that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you rem remember that. Yeah. And, and Walter Scott's brother lives literally right around the corner. I mean, literally right around the corner from where I live. I mean, I walk mm -hmm. at my house, go three houses down, turn the corner, go about four houses down. His brother's house is on the right-hand side. And so mm -hmm. you can't get away you know, from it. Yeah. Uh, you can't get away from racism. You can't get away from social injustices. You can't get away from it. But yet, you have to work at love. At least mm -hmm. I feel like I have to, to work at love. I have to work at forgiveness. It's it's not an easy thing um, to do. And I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Well, no. I, and, but, and the thing the thing that I feel like you're expressing, Tim, is the truth, and that is. We, we sometimes kick around this word as a much too light a thing. And part of what, what I'm attempting to say with 1 Corinthians 13 in another part of the service is it sounds poetic and sweet and, and, and here it is Valentine's Day also. So there's this whole, oh, it's romantic and isn't that nice. When in fact, I think your words this is hard is something that that we really need to take to heart because it's one thing for african americans to have to work at loving in spite of oppression and prejudice and a lifetime of seeing these things unfolding it's it's a different kind of work that the white community needs to to be really 
taking these things to heart and saying, what do we need to repent of? What can we do to bring about reconciliation and genuine, authentic community and love? And so I, I'm glad you're talking about how hard this is and how hard it needs to be for, for us to reciprocate and, and do what's necessary. So I feel like your, your confessional words are so important, Tim, and I appreciate that so much. And your gentle spirit. I mean, I know, I know that what you've said is true, but you've been able to say it in a way that um, is kind still. And so thank you for, for who you are and for what you represent. And thank you for representing Emmanuel Church in, in such a good way. And, and on behalf of that congregation, thank you for the witness that they've given to the world and continue to give to the world. And by the way, it's not only love and forgiveness, but it's been the prophetic word of racial justice and standing for what's right that Emmanuel has been one of the uh, clarion voices over the centuries. And so I, I think um, I hadn't realized it was 30 years. I knew it had been a long time that you've been a member there, but. Mm -hmm. 1989. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, is there anything else you would like to say that we need to hear? Um, I, I don't know where where your 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 church is as far as your congregation and 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 the thinking that's there or the general um culture of of, of, of how they they feel about these kinds of um, um topics but um for those who really want to make a difference and who want to um change things uh, i i ask them to spend some time researching um spend some time um looking at organizations that that contribute to um, changing things for for the better and i also ask them to not give up because it's very easy to do yeah and, and when I say not give up, it, it seems like whenever something horrific happens, you think, okay, this is really going to change things. Yeah. People are going to really change their minds. Yeah. People are going to start doing things for the better. But it, it seems like folks just don't. <laughs> And, and, and things just still say, stay the same. So, but if we are persistent, um, I, I think that things can can change. But I, I think a lot of times um, it's easy to to give up. Yeah. So, so don't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that challenge. Thank you for your gentle spirit. And I'm grateful, Tim, personally, for our friendship and for for your hanging in there with me, both in being a kind friend, but also in your words of truth to me over the years and your challenging of me, which I need and I really appreciate. And thank you for challenging us today. And uh, Tim, would it be okay if, if I closed our time in prayer? I, I would very much appreciate that. Thank you. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for Tim, for Mother Emanuel Church, and for all they have stood for for all these years. I thank you for Tim's encouraging and courageous words tonight, his honesty and his 
genuine desire to hang in there with racial justice, but also reminding us how important it is to hang in there together and not give up. I ask your blessings on him, on his teaching, on his school, on his church, and all the many ways that you use his life in such good and healing ways. Most of all, we give thanks for the greatest gift of all in Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen, my brother. It's always good spending time with you. And you, my friend. Take care. Thank you. God bless you. Same here. Receive now God's blessing. Each of you is God's beloved daughter or son. Claim God's love as your own. Then go from this place and share God's love with others. 
be the presence of Christ for the world around